Welcome to the Diversity Talk series powered by Great Companies, Great Leaders podcast and sponsored by Best Companies AZ and Career Connectors. I'm your host, Christine Gannon, and I'm the founder and CEO of Brightworks Consulting. And we're a boutique consulting firm focused on really helping companies at the local level where we feel like real change happens with DEI solutions that really make a difference. And so whether it's developing the entire DEI strategy, or providing latest best practices and policies, we offer a roadmap for companies to improve and enhance the culture of their company. Today, we're honored to host the Diversity Talk series that was created to connect with award-winning companies who are committed to fostering a work environment where differences that we're born with and those that we acquire throughout our lives are understood, valued, and celebrated. We're having conversations with Arizona's top employers to discuss how a focus on diversity and inclusion leads to better performance, increased innovation, and an enhanced ability to address customer needs and a more vibrant culture. Today, we are really excited to welcome GoDaddy Vice President of Diversity, Inclusion, and Belonging, Christy Lilas. Christy, welcome. Thank you for having me, Christine. I'm so excited to be here. As Vice President of Diversity, Inclusion, and Belonging at GoDaddy, Christy Lilas is responsible for implementing holistic, integrated, and equitable programs that allow GoDaddy employees and customers to continue feeling empowered and supported, furthering the business mission of making opportunity more inclusive for all. Christy combines an educational and personal background in social justice topics with corporate experience and strategy and operations to drive meaningful change. And prior to joining GoDaddy in April of 2022, Christy worked at a global ed tech company. She holds a Bachelor of Arts degree in English with a concentration in women's studies from Vassar College. Christy, so excited to have you with us today. We'd love for you to tell our audience a little bit about your role at GoDaddy and just a little bit about the, your bio. It says that Implementing holistic and integrated and equitable programs that allow GoDaddy employees and customers to continue feeling empowered and supported. What does that look like in your role day to day? Well, thank you again, Christine, for having me. And thank you for what you do for, you know, our broader communities. And I, I love the, the way that you're talking about both inclusion and equity um, and, and really thinking it through from a nuanced perspective. So it's, it's really important. So I, I appreciate that. Um, so what do I actually do? It's a great question because we use these, these big words like holistic and integrated programs. So I'll describe what that means a little bit in my day to day. My role is to really help my organization think about strategize, prioritize, and execute inclusive and equitable approaches and processes across the business, all with the goal of fulfilling the mission of making opportunity more inclusive for all, really for all. <laughs> That's truly the goal. Um, and that focus is generally on building that sense of belonging and empowerment for both our people and our customers, of course. And you mentioned that I have a background in strategy and operations, and I, I apologize in advance. You're going to hear these words come up that really make that background very clear because the way that I do, do the work is to approach it as we would any other top business priority, right? Which is truly the way to integrate this work into our day to day, just like we would do any other any other priority to ensure that we're actually making progress and that we're gauging it and that we're governing it and that we're um, prioritizing it as needed, right? So that includes things like data and analysis, requirements gathering, assessment, strategizing, planning, implementation, governance, metrics, right? All of these corporate words that we, we use, we should be applying to this work in the exact same way as we do everything else. So to simplify it though, I'm just focused on the who, what, why, how, and when of all things related to DEIB, really. And the end goal, of course, is to make sure that what we design as you've heard me say already, is it truly embedded and integrated into the way that people work day to day, because it won't stick unless it's really integrated into what we do. Absolutely. And I'll just, I'll just finish with saying importantly, I'm not only looking at employee experience, right? I'm also prioritizing DEIB across business operations and customer experience as well. So my purview is both global and enterprise wide, uh, and that allows us to make the greatest impact across all of our roles as a business, as an employer, and as a tech company alike. I could unpack that for three days because this is why you're successful, right? This is why GoDaddy is so successful and your role is so critical to the implementation of DEI, not only as a program, but a business imperative because you've tied it to the business so that 
I like to say, and this is simplified, but it's really, it's making it part of the DNA of the organization versus a project, right? right. It's not a checkbox project where we implement some training or we implement just an ERG or we look at employee turnover. It really for it to be successful and embedded in the organization, it has to be part of the culture and, and right. a lived part of the culture. So congrats, congrats on all of that and for seeing that and envisioning that and implementing that. Well, I appreciate it. It's a work in progress as we'll talk it about, is. but right, uh, it's an ongoing, it's ongoing work. Um, and that's just, it's like any other work that we do, right? It has to be ongoing right. for us to continue to, to uh, execute the needed solutions and, and be flexible and agile. Uh, as as required. Absolutely. So if we think about action and GoDaddy's commitment to DEI, the business mission of making opportunity more inclusive for all, how does GoDaddy demonstrate that commitment? What does that look like? And I'm thinking about organizations who are saying, yes, that's what we want to do, but what does that really tangibly look like? Right. You're asking for us to show our receipts. I love it, Christine. Yes. I appreciate it. <laughs> I, I, I'd love to do it. Um, one of the reasons I decided to join GoDaddy was because we have historically demonstrated a pretty mature ability to identify a gap or opportunity, decide that something needs to be done about it, and then do it, right? Uh, and that's not necessarily true of all organizations where there can be hesitancy to really dive into the deeper problems and, and do the work because of perceived risk or uncertain outcomes, just some fear. It's understandable fear. A lot of this work can be tricky and nuanced and complex, um, so it's totally understandable, but I really did see that about GoDaddy, and, and it was one of the main reasons why I decided to join the team, and I'm, I'm really happy I did. One example, one big example, is how we were one of the first companies to publish our representation and pay equity data. So mm -hmm. not only were we already doing the pay equity analyses, right, and looking at the representation data when others weren't, but we additionally made the commitment to publish it to provide that transparency and create that accountability for ourselves, which really takes... The work to the next step and the next level. Okay. We also instituted a really thoughtful performance assessment program that is designed to mitigate the effects of bias in performance reviews by ensuring that we're looking at not just what people are doing for their work, but how they're doing it mm -hmm. and whether those behaviors specifically in the how align to our inclusive values. So clearly that's that's really kind of making sure that we're integrating into the 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 ways that our folks are showing up in the day-to-day -day and how those behaviors are um, uh, affecting their team members and their work. And then how are we actually gauging that as part of our assessment processes? Um, and finally, I'll say, obviously, hiring my role was obviously a big step in showing commitment to DEIB. And going forward, I'll be really working very closely with all of our business leaders on how we're integrating very tactically across the business um, these priorities into how we all operate. As part of that, I'm focused on a two-prong approach, which includes enabling individuals and refining systems and processes. Because I think, as you know, Christine, you can't have one without the other and expect to make progress. You really have to make sure that you're focusing on both at the same time. And naturally, something like our employee resource group program is a big part of that, which I oversee. And uh, I, I hope that we have some, some time to dive a little bit more into the ERGs yes. because they are such a big, a big component of this work. So I do want to go there next, but before we go there, I want to talk a little bit about what you said related to data and pay equity. And my business partner, Pat Milligan, she's also the executive director here at Brightworks. She likes to say, let's prosecute the data right. because the data will show, are we really making a difference? And are the policies and practices that we've put in place, are they making a difference? And it sounds like you're doing that. We've started it for sure, and we're doing it as best as we can, obviously, knowing that uh, as the years go on, more and more data becomes available to us. So we're focused on how do we extend and kind of broaden that view um, and build out clear dashboards, for example, across the entire employee lifecycle, all the way from you know recruitment and hiring to onboarding to promotions to performance to pay equity to exit surveys and offboarding, right? And what are the data uh, points that, that we have available to us across all of those? And that includes some big ones like our GoDaddy voice results. So it's one of, it's our global survey where we ask about things like feelings of inclusion and belonging and respect and whether we feel like we can be our authentic selves at, uh, at work. And I can slice that view uh, into different demographic groups and, and very importantly see are there any specific groups that are feeling differently than others, right? And what does that employee experience look like? 
But we also have to complement that continually with things like focus group feedback. So where's both quantitative and qualitative data that we can bring together so we can test out the trends that we're seeing and make sure that people are telling us, right? right? One of the most important things in this work is to make sure that you're truly listening to the people who are in question. So let's go talk to those folks, right? Let's talk to our marginalized employees and our underprivileged and underserved uh, customers and really get a sense from them uh, how they're feeling and what sort of resources or um, interventions they might need specifically, right? Because that's the, that's the best way for us to design those solutions. So combination of all the different kinds of metrics you can pull in, including event attendance, uh, conversation engagement on Slack or whatever platform you're using, right? Pulse surveys, et cetera, and bringing all of it together so you have that 360 view. So it's a big, it's a lot of work, as I just described, a whole bunch of different data points there. So we are really trying to assess where we have the ability to look at that today and then where we're trying to build out that broader view and essentially pull it all under one very clear umbrella uh, across the organization. I think a really important, one of the really important points that you raise for organizations that are are maybe not at the maturity level that you are within your organization is that once you have that data and you've taken time to assess and look at it, this may change your strategy, right? right? Based on what you're getting back and what you see and you hear, this is, you said it early on, it's a work in progress. It's not a static program or project. It really evolves based on the feedback that you get. Right. That's exactly right. And it's it's how we would respond to a product or a service we put on the market, right? If we right. got terrible feedback about it from our customers, we would immediately take a look at it and say, okay, how do we enable the customer experience and, and, and better set them up for success? We need to do that with our people uh, so that they can actually continue to enable our customers as well and make sure that everyone across the, the, the life cycle of both product development and services and, uh, and engagement and interaction are all feeling as 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 though they're they're all equally set up for success so that we can get to the best business outcomes as needed. Absolutely. Okay, I promise we're going to ERG next because we <laughs> could talk about metrics and data all day long. We could. So let's talk about employee resource groups. Why are they important to your company? Um, just talk a little bit about what you've implemented and how, how that's working. I could also talk about employee resource groups all day <laughs> long. So I could have you all day, Christine. Um, our ERGs specifically uh, at GoDaddy are focused on four overarching pillars, which I feel like are, are very important pillars to ensure that we're truly leveraging the power of these employee groups. Um, that includes talent development. So things, you know, you think about like recruitment, retention, onboarding, professional development, et cetera, learning development. So events, speakers, webinars, trainings, and I'll talk a little bit more about how I'm integrating that into the DEIB realm. Business development. So uh, importantly, how, how are we actually thinking about our ERGs and how they play a role in customers and our community outreach and our partnerships, our market research, et cetera. And finally, uh, the most obvious one, of course, being community development, which is, you know, they're, they're such great groups. They're literally resource groups for employees uh, to amplify engagement, create conversation spaces, um, and, and provide all kinds of resources and networking and team building opportunities. And these pretty much align with the popular 4C ERG assessment um, model, if you're familiar with that. And um, as I said, really allow us to leverage the power of these groups and, and start thinking about ways to integrate them more fully into the way that we run our business. If I'm an organization that hasn't put a focus on ERGs yet, where would you recommend that they start? I'd say approach it from two different directions at the same time. One is to think about what a structure could and should look like and communicate that you have an openness to uh, you know, helping to start a program while also then gauging employee interest and seeing if there are some passion and there, there are some folks out there who would be interested in starting one. Because I say both because clearly an employee resource group is meant to be employee driven, right? Importantly, of course, but at the same time, employee passion and employee engagement can't be harnessed well unless we have some infrastructure there and some real corporate and business support. And it allows people to feel like they can speak up and say, oh, I am in interested in, in creating a program like this. And if I feel like you're open to it as a leader, then I'll raise my hand for it, which is actually exactly how I ended up starting, uh, co-founding our first employee resource group at an organization I was at where we had some interest 
we wanted to do something. We weren't quite sure what that could look like. And then it wasn't until a leader spoke up on a call and said, oh, and we also know that, you know, we'd love to get employee resource groups started. So it just it clearly opened the door for us and gave us a next step. And then we were able to really work in tandem with them and in collaboration with them on building out what the program looked like, not just our group. And it, it opened up all kinds of doors for all the other groups to, to come and, and get started, as well as really ignited some passion in, in some of us for the broader DEIB work, which actually led me exactly to where I am today. I, I love what you said. And it sounds like you could even do a pulse survey. If you don't have anything in your organization, you could do a pulse survey or a survey of some type to find out what the interest is in terms of employee resource groups to, to kick that off and get started. Right. And that's a great way to do you know, two things at once. It's to show that you have a commitment to it and a willingness to, uh, to start a program like that, as well as giving folks a very clear and easy way to show their interest. So it's a great idea. Do you, how, uh, let me think about how to phrase the question. How do you, how do you think executive leadership and their commitment to ERGs, how do you think that plays a part in the success of ERGs or does it? Oh, it 100% does. I'd say, realistically thinking, you could probably have an ERG that can do a bit in the, if you think about those four pillars that I mentioned, right, could do a bit in that community development pillar a bit, like without um, without that uh, very clear business uh, commitment from the senior leaders. But there's not not a whole lot of opportunity for them to really uh, show their value across the other three pillars of talent development, learning development, and business development if the leaders aren't understanding the value that's there and the potential that's there. Um, and I'd say ERGs really do enable so many different business outcomes. They and they, they you know create that internal community and networking, of course. They also create space for collaboration um, around commonalities across employees, which is so important for employee engagement and satisfaction, right? Particularly for those from underrepresented groups and their allies who, you know, we're, we're all looking to figure out ways to retain our great talent, especially our, our talent from diverse backgrounds. ERGs are one of the number one ways to do that. Um, they can also support business efforts around diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. So I've been working a lot on how can I leverage these groups for things like input on the content that we're developing for our marketing mm -hmm. materials how can i get their input on the on the training that we're that we're developing how can they help me run some conversation series around topics like microaggressions and you mm -hmm. know cultural events that happen which are so important so that there's so many different ways that that these groups can be tapped and don't forget that if you actually invite them to the table and really involve them in the way that the business runs they become champions and advocates of the business itself Right. And they're actually bringing information back to these groups of folks. They're creating energy and passion and interest around our other business priorities and our top of mind interests. So this feedback loop becomes really in both directions um, and in a lovely way where they're telling us what our employees need and giving us the opportunity to to provide those resources. But then they're also helping to get the word out to our employees and kind of allow them to become more mission driven uh, across the business and really work toward the same outcomes. So it's it's truly a win-win in all directions. I feel like it has a strong impact on the brand and it has a strong impact on your culture. Would you agree? Right. Absolutely. And I think that's where if the senior leaders don't recognize that, then the ERGs will have a very limited impact. If the senior leaders do recognize that, it unlocks all of that capability that that, that you just mentioned. So my next question was going to be, but I think you answered it, but let's let's talk about it for a second. If I'm an organization just starting down the DEI path and maybe I've done a couple of things, but I haven't put in a full strategy, do you think ERGs are the place to start or where would you recommend they start? Would it be putting in someone like yourself in that role or what are your thoughts about that? It's really the kind of question that needs to be answered specifically at the organization based on where you are and, and what your capabilities are and um, what your goals are uh, right off the bat. But I, I will say it, it sounds a little silly, uh, but I, I have to put my strategy and operations hat on and say that a simple process map goes a long way in identifying uh, areas of gaps and opportunities across the organization. So I, when I say that, I mean, start by mapping out your end-to-end -end view of employee experience, customer experience, and business operations, right? Taking that step back to say, okay, 
what are what are these end to end cycles and where are there opportunities across these cycles to think about how we can focus on things like inclusion and belonging and importantly also equity right um asking some questions of yourselves and your and your leaders like how are we considering marginalized experiences uh, and the impact of bias across recruitment and onboarding and performance assessments etc how are um we thinking about the customer experience and making sure that we're setting up our all of our customers from different backgrounds for success. So, for example, how might a black mother of three living on social services experience this product or the service that we have versus an upper middle class white father living in the suburbs? Have we ever asked ourselves that? Right. So, truly, just thinking thinking about all the different impacts of um, your processes and systems uh, across the end to end view is a really helpful way to find the biggest areas of opportunity or the biggest red flags that need to be addressed, and then starting to think about the solutions that might address them. So employee resource groups, for example, can really help enable all different kinds of solutions across that cycle, um, but you may not need to prioritize as something else if you feel like, oh, we're actually not paying our people equi like equitably first. Right. That feels like a good place to start before, you know, prioritizing um, a, a, another another way of addressing the, the broader needs. So all that's to say, think about the way that you you operate as a business in terms of finding out what the biggest problems are and prioritizing them and do the same for the DEIB work. Just make sure that you're really elevating the the person and the the, the people mm -hmm. experience in this because I can't say it enough, like people, are our employees and our customers, right? They are the ones who literally do the work. They are the ones who are buying the products and, and engaging with our services. And when, when you pull on any thread in what we do as a business, it will always come back to a person, right? So um, the idea here is to really take a look at your end-to-end -end cycles, figure out where you can empower people across that cycle, um, and really truly treat them as your most important asset and think about where you want to prioritize solutions for them. I really appreciate that on so many levels because part of the work that we do, we talked about developing the roadmap at the local level for organizations. We developed a diagnostic that does that really in terms of looking at what have you put in place and what kind of policies and practice, practices have you put in place? What kind of data are you measuring? So I think that diagnostic, that roadmap, that assessment, all those pieces can help organizations create a very strong strategy and know where to start. Where's right. the biggest pain point? So I appreciate that. Right. So as we close out, a couple more questions. Why do you recommend your company is a good place for diverse candidates to apply? Well, I appreciate that question because <laughs> um, as I said, I, I was attracted to GoDaddy for a couple of different reasons, um, but you may have different reasons of your own. I'd say GoDaddy is a good place to consider because we're thinking about all these things and we're trying to do so thoughtfully and deliberately and with care. So while we're acting on our, our commitments, um, we're doing so even when they're messy and, and or risky and we know that there's always more work to do, right? And I can tell you all this because I'm the one driving that work. So you can take, you can take my word for it. Um, and I'm not saying we've done it all because there really truly is, oh, there's always more to be done, but I'm saying that we're doing the best to do it right uh, and with the greatest and having the greatest and longest impact, right? Um, but don't just take my word for it. You can actually, as I mentioned, we, we're focused on transparency. So you can go read about it in our diversity and parity report and our sustainability report, both of which are currently available on our website, godaddy.com. Um, and the fact that you can go and read these, I don't know, and I think it says a lot in and of itself, right? It does. Um, but all that aside, I'll, I'll say, don't, don't just come to work for GoDaddy because I'm telling you that we care. Come work for us because you also believe in our mission of making opportunity more inclusive for all, um, especially small business owners and entrepreneurs, and help us continue to figure out exactly what that looks like for everyone. That's why I think you should consider us. If you have that, if you have that sort of drive, then we would love to chat with you. Phenomenal. Okay, last question. Curveball. <laughs> Who's your hero? That is a very hard question. <laughs> it really is a very difficult question. Who is my hero? Um, I have to say, I, I can't pinpoint a particular person 
specifically. I'd say I, I it's more the type of person is okay. my hero. Okay. Fair. So sorry to sorry to throw a curveball right That's back at good. you, I'm Christine. Good. But um, <laughs> my my heroes are the type of people who see an opportunity to make an impact on their broader societies and really take that opportunity, even knowing that often it means that they have to sacrifice something of their own. And there have been so many people who do this in history, who've got us to where we are today and who've personally affected my life. I mean, I can get married because of people who did this. I can have a job like I do because of people who did this, right? I can feel safe walking in certain areas because of people who did this. Uh, and people continue to do it today, every day. Um, there are folks who see something that is a problem for others and they realize that they have to give something up to make somebody else's experience better and they do that willingly. Uh, so you know, for all of you who do that in your day to day or have done that in the past, thank you. People like me are where we are because of you. And um, you know, it just goes to show where where empathy and caring can really drive society and in, into really positive places in the future. Absolutely. 100% agree with you. Thank you so much for all that you shared so transparently about GoDaddy, just the internal workings, your perspective on DEI, um, on belonging, on inclusivity. I think you've given the audience some great things to consider as they look at their own strategy. And so we just really thank you for being with us today. Thank you so much for the opportunity, Christine. And like I said, thank you for doing what you're doing and keep it up. Spectacular work. Thank you. Brightworks Consulting hosts this podcast and YouTube channel to spotlight the leadership around the world that is changing lives. Brightworks offers a myriad of consulting services in the public and private sector to include diversity, equity, and inclusion solutions for any size company. You can find us at www.brightworksconsulting.com. We're honored to have Best Companies AZ as a presenting sponsor for this podcast. Best Companies AZ is your number one source for regional employer branding. You can find them at www.bestcompaniesaz.com.